folks, welcome back to the Camping Astronomer channel. Well, there hasn't been much camping uh, going on over the last month because we've uh, had a four week lockdown here in the UK. That's ending next week, so I'm hopeful that in the next week or so I'll be able to get out and uh, do a little wild camp. Um, but I've cracked and I've decided I'm going to camp in the garden tonight uh, so I get sort of a night outdoors basically. Um, and I'm going to be doing a couple of things this evening. One is testing out this sleeping bag here, the OEX Leviathan. It's a um, four plus season sleeping bag. Theoretically, it goes down to minus nine degrees or so. Um, for me, that really means minus seven, uh, but the temperature tonight is not likely to drop below about three degrees. So the chances are I'll be roasting. And the other thing I'm gonna be doing is doing a bit of astrophotography with this setup here which is a um, star adventurer tracking mount and a small refractor telescope. Um, so I'm going to get myself all set up now and I'll see you a little bit later on. My name is John and I make videos on camping, astronomy and walking. If you like what you see in this video then please check my channel out as there may be others that interest you there. But in the meantime let's crack on with today's video. So this is going to be home for the night. It's just a cheap hooped bivvy uh, made by Gertop or Geartop. Got it off Amazon for about 60 or 70 pound. It's only a single skin bivvy. So to protect the down sleeping bag from uh, possible condensation and stuff on the inside, I'll probably put that sleeping bag in a standard bivvy. Inside the bivvy it's quite spacious. There's quite a lot of headroom there. There's a mesh back there for ventilation, a couple of pockets and the materials kept off where the sleeping bag will be with a bit of luck um, because of the hoop at the end. But as I say I'm not going to chance that with the sleeping bag I'm going to put that in a standard sort of British Army type bivvy just to protect that because the material is only single skin so uh, moisture will come through at the drop of a hat and there's quite a good side door with a independent mesh as well for more for use in the summer than for what I'm going to see tonight Looking at the sleeping bag then, it comes in this sort of large holding sack basically. This is the storage bag for it rather than the compression sack and it's just there so that you can store it and stop the feathers getting too scrunched up. Inside that sack is this here which is the compression sack. Um, I've heard varying reviews about how good or not this is. Uh, we won't find that out tonight, I guess, um, but when I do a wild camp in a week or two's time, I'll be using this and we'll see how effective it is. The bag's got a full length zip, which can be opened from the inside or the outside and a baffle, which goes over the zip. There's also a neck baffle here. and a draw cord and a second draw cord here in addition to the one we just looked at um, so you can presumably really seal yourself in inside this thing um, usually that's not what I like doing I prefer to leave them slightly open unless it's freezing cold but we'll find that out tonight and there's a small pocket there presumably to put your keys or something in so I'm going to put this in the bivvy now and um, let it all loft up. So that's home sweet home. There's a X-bed air mat there and just a normal kind of roll up foam sleeping mat underneath that and a Trekology pillow. And I'll have a look a bit later on as to whether to put the sleeping bag 
in a British Army BV just to protect it from condensation. So that's everything set now. Just need to wait for the moon to come up from behind the trees and we're off. Okay, the moon's up. As are our next door neighbour but one's Christmas lights. So I think it's time to go. Well, that's a live view of the moon there. Let's change the scale a bit. And she's looking very nice. Well, I've managed to find the Pleiades, which is to the lower left of the moon, about there. I managed to get it in my telescope. And that's a live view of it there on my computer screen. Um, I'm taking a whole bunch of exposures at the moment, just little five second ones, because any more than that, and it's blowing it out with the uh, light pollution coming from the moon. But I'm going to take a bunch of those and then stack them together tomorrow and see if I can see any um, nebulosity and stuff come, come out of it. Well, my astronomy was um, brought to an end by the fact that it started to cloud over a bit, some really high cloud. Then everything started to dew up and finally the battery died on my laptop. So that was pretty well the end of that. So um, now I'm inside this bivy thing. It's a bit like being in a coffin compared to being in a tent. But um, nonetheless, it's quite comfortable. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to settle down now. And um, I'll let you know in the morning what I think about the sleeping bag and uh, being in this bivy. So I'll see you then. Good night. So how did the night go? Well, the temperature last night dropped to a minimum of four degrees. And that meant I was absolutely roasting. I have heard people who've um, tried this sleeping bag when it's been nine degrees and they've been so hot they practically had to get outside their tent. Um, so yesterday it was uh, four degrees. The bag has a comfort value of minus nine, uh, which for me translates to about minus seven and a comfort limit of minus 16. So it's probably not surprising that a um, four degrees the bag was very warm the uh, net result of this was i had to take the bag out of the british army bivy that i had it in to protect it from um, condensation on the the inside of the tent so i could stick my feet out and in the end i had the zip sort of pulled up almost to the halfway point to allow my feet to stick out and almost to the halfway point the upper zip um, to enable me to get my arms out and I also had the uh, bivy flap open just using the uh, the mesh uh, which was handy because a it kept the inside of the bivy a bit cooler and secondly it allowed the condensation from my breath to disappear out which was um, a good thing because I hadn't got the bag protected by the bivy. So I think we can say that in terms of warmth the bag certainly does the job. The sort of minimum temperature I can remember ever seeing here or say over the last 20 years or so was minus seven at night. Um, there was a very bad winter when the whole country got snowed in basically and I remember the, the, that was the minimum temperature at that time. So the chances of this bag not being capable of sorting me out um, are insignificant. I think it really will come into its own at temperatures of naught or one degree and below really. That's um, what it's for and hopefully I'll be testing it out in those sorts of temperatures shortly. Um, so now we'll look at some of the other things that I noticed about the bag. I mentioned I'd been zipping and unzipping the bag to try and uh, keep myself cool and uh, in doing so, I noticed that the zips didn't snag on the internal baffle, um, which is quite unusual for me. A lot of the bags that I've got, you, you have to kind of gently 
tease them up or down to avoid snagging. So I was pleased with that. In terms of space inside the bag, I found it uh, quite roomy. I was able to sort of flex my arms out and roll over in the bag, all that sort of thing. Plenty of foot space. Uh, obviously, I'm fairly skinny. Um, so if you're a bigger build, it, you'd be sort of filling the bag up a bit more. Um, but for me, there was tons of, of space in there, which is something, again, that um, I'm very pleased about. Internally, the bag feels quite soft. I've heard people say that they think it feels a bit crinkly, um, but that's not something that I say that I noticed at all. It felt quite silky to me. The mat that I was on, the X-Bed mat, doesn't tend to rustle. Uh, I know some of the Thermarest ones do. So the whole thing sort of was quite quiet as far as I was concerned. Another thing I've heard about this bag is that when it's new, it loses a lot of feathers. Uh, I can, deliberately went round the inside of the bivvy this morning looking to see how many feathers I could find, and I found two. So um, again, that's not really been a problem with me. It may have just been that a couple of individuals had bad luck with the bag that they had. Uh, so yeah, there was no, no real loss of feathers there. Um, so what we'll do now is I'll pack it up into its stuff sack and we'll see how big it ends up when it's compressed. So this is the compression sack here. Well, I've got it down to this and I reckon I could get it down to um, a little bit less than that if I really wanted to. And I would say that's about a third smaller than my three season bag. And whilst it might not be the world's greatest compression sack, it sort of gets the job done. Uh, maybe I might end up having a look at a, a dry bag and uh, seeing what I can do with a dry bag instead. But overall, I'm quite pleased with that. That's quite a small package. So overall, what are my conclusions then? Well, to be honest, I'm very pleased. Um, I can only really anticipate spending four to six nights a year in temperatures, uh, out in temperatures that would warrant this sort of sleeping bag. So it's difficult for me to justify spending anywhere between 200 and 350 pound on a bag uh, to cope with that. This bag here, a few weeks ago it was on sale for a hundred pound and it regularly seems to sit around the 125 pound mark so it's half the price of most of the competitors maybe you pay a little bit for the weight um, the weight of this thing is 1374 grams uh, which for compared to the synthetic bags that, you know, I had a synthetic bag that did minus one and that was about um, 1800 grams. So for me, this is actually quite a light bag. I'm sure, you, you know, if you spent 300 pounds, you might get a bag that weighs 900 grams or, or a kilogram or something. Um, so yeah, for the money, I think this is a tremendous bag. I'm looking forward to using it, hopefully within the next couple of weeks. The temperature down here is supposed to drop to around freezing point in about a week's time. So uh, hopefully I'll get out and do a wild camp then. At the end of this video, I'm just going to stick up the astro photos that I took last night while I was out there, just for those of you that are interested. Um, but yeah, I look forward to seeing you ideally on a wild camp. So uh, yeah, you take care and thanks very much for watching.
Well, I hope you found that video uh, enjoyable. Uh, if you did, it would be great if you could press the like button and maybe make some comments about what you did or didn't like in the comments section below. Uh, if you did enjoy it, though, uh, maybe have a look at the other videos on my channel as you may find something of interest to you there. And if so, it would be absolutely fantastic if you could subscribe. That would really help me out. Uh, but in the meantime, I wish you well and cheerio until next time.